This is just an additional video on the duct sizing portion, specifically for those of you who are taking design HVAC 1416 at Porter and Chester or YTI. Um, there was a couple questions that came up last night in an email conversation with a student who needed a little bit of extra help on this, and I want to give that. Um, there's a little bit of confusion about one of the duct sizing, actually two of them that I want to sort of clear up clarify what I said in an email last night because I was a little bit, um, quite honestly, it's been a long week. So we have two, two of these that we really want to take a closer look at. Remember, this exercise was to take a square duct or a round duct, find out what the quantity, what the airflow quantity in CFM is, and also calculate out the velocity. Now, the one known that we gave you was the fact that we want everything to be with a 0 .5, 0 0.05 inch water column, okay? That's our pressure loss. I don't want to go over that, okay? So again, all of our measurements are based on the 0 0.05 inch water column. So the first thing I want to do is let's just set this up right. Let's draw that one line in so we will never go above on our calculations, we will never go above the 0.5 inch water column. So I'm going to put this line in red. Um, let me, I'm going to actually pull this up in size a little bit because it's so important. But I will never go above 0.5 inch water column. I may be right on it, but I'm not going to go above it. Okay, so let's, we're treating our red line as our max we can go on pressure drop okay so the other thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just make sure we realize what our duct velocities is okay for branch lines which is the branch lines that come off the main duct and go to each room okay or each part of an individual register like ceiling register floor register or whatever we want to be over here okay on the branch duct side okay for um for our main duct lines which is going to be our larger duct we need to be over in the main duct area now just for ease of use what we're sizing for in most of our examples okay is residential okay so i don't want to really go over this area but again be aware that if you're not sizing for residential, you're going to be elsewhere in the charts here. So you can keep that in mind. Okay. Um, now, it's really interesting that apartments are a little bit broken off from residential, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Um, let's worry about, let's do our examples. Okay. So we've set this up. We know what our max is. So let's take a look at our first one. Okay. I want to take a look at this 10 by 4. Now, the question that came up last night was 10 by 4 actually shows up in a couple different areas, okay? If I'm looking for my rectangular size, I have a 10 by 4 there. I have a 10 by 4 or 4 by 10. It's not an exact match in that one. Okay, not in that one, but there is a 4 by 10 over in the 10 inch. And you can actually go up higher. There's a lot of different. If you calculate it out manually, you can find a lot of 4 by 10 options. But let's stick with this for now. Okay, so what do you use? Do you use a 4-inch or 10-inch? That was the question. Or do you use something in between? Because you can use other sizes as well. Okay, so let's let's take a look at this. Okay, so I have a choice of a 4 by 10. We need to figure out, or a 4 inch or a 10 inch. We need to figure out which round we're going to use. Okay, you can also probably get it into a 6 or 8. You can go much higher than that. But that's, that's just one example. So I know that I have a choice of 4 inch or 10 inch. But the interesting part is... They both give you 120 CFMs of air, according to this chart. Okay, so let's take a look and see what we can do. Okay, so if I come over to my airflow duct sizing, okay, 
if I'm my lowest size, and I'm going to go back into a line so that we can see it, and I'm going to go to, eh, let's use green for my low. Okay, so here I have a 4-inch, okay, as my green line. My next option is my 10-inch, and I'll change that to blue. Okay, so basically anything between 4 and 10 here will allow me to get the line, get um, the airflow that I need. But here's the, here's the kicker. The 4-inch line doesn't come down in my standard size charts and cross, get to the bottom of this 0.05. In other words, I need to be under 0.05 pressure drop. Okay, so we need to look at what come what sizes do I have that are available that are under the 0.05 inch pressure drop. So again, I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to say, okay, will a 10 inch work? Okay, yes, a 10 inch will work because that blue line is coming under my pressure drop. Okay, would a 9 inch work? Okay, so we come over here. Yeah, a 9-inch duct would work. Okay, would an 8-inch duct work? Yes, an 8-inch duct would work. Would a... Uh, 7-inch duct work? Yeah, it would work. Would a 6-inch duct work? Yes. Would a 5-inch? No, because it's not underneath our 0.05-inch water column. If I had a 0.1-inch water column, yeah, it would work. But I need to be under this flow chart someplace here. Okay? So, again, if you draw the minimum, draw the maximum, Okay, you can get, you can figure out different duct sizing. Now, here, if I use a 6-inch, I only have about 70 CFM. If I jump up to a 7-inch, I have 100 CFM. If I come up to an 8-inch, I could have 150 CFM, or actually, I mean, they're saying it's 120 on the other chart. If I come up to um, a 9-inch, I could have very close to a little bit over 200. If I come up to a 10 inch, okay, which is the max that that other table showing, I could actually come up with more. Now, what you also have to realize though, is you have a third line in here. We have our feet per minute. Okay, so if I take a look at that third line, oh, uh, let's do that in black. Okay, let's say I choose to use the 10 inch duct. Okay, my airflow is at 500 feet per minute. If I choose to use the, um, oh, let's say the 9-inch duct, okay, my airflow is still around that 500, okay, feet per minute. Actually, the one for the 10-inch is a little bit higher, okay, 500 feet per minute for the 9-inch, um, but then I'm going to start going up a little bit or dropping the feet per minute as I get my duct work smaller. So you have to worry about that as well. Now, if I go too high, okay, let's think about this. I could still go up to like even a 20 inch duct from my high side, but look what happens to my feet per minute. I could get, I could convert to a 20 inch. Okay. But look what happens to my feet per minute. Okay. It starts going up. So my two ranges on that conversion would either be a 4-inch or a 14. Oh, I'm sorry, or a 10. But my feet per minute make a difference, and so does my CFM and my pressures. Okay, so a little bit of this comes with experience. What am I going, what's my design CFM for that room? So in terms of answering this lab, I'm going to accept any answer, either of those. Well, I'm really only going to accept a 10-inch answer because that is the one that's within range of my static, of my pressure drop and um, what it's showing on the chart as a conversion. Now, I'm going to try to later on show you a picture of a duculator and we'll go down that road. 
but again, my feet per minute is very important. So if I have a 10 inch duct and a 500 feet per minute, if I come over here to duct velocities, I can use that as a branch duct or as a supply run. Okay, there's a maximum. So in a residential structure, the 10 inch would work. Sort of makes sense on that one. So again, the duct sizing chart, and by the way, four by 10 and 10 by four are the same number if you take a look at it, just swap them around. Okay, there's another one in here. Oh, let's see, we have, there's another one in here also um, that gives you a big, uh, big range because we're talking about free inches inside. Okay, if I can get airflow, if I can get 120 CFM through a 10 inch duct, can I also get 120 CFM through an eight inch duct, six inch duct and four inch duct? Yeah, the problem is the pressures are gonna increase. Okay, my static pressure will increase and feet per minute will increase as I get to the lower portions. It's just a matter of fitting the amount of air through a smaller hole. Okay, the other one we had a question on was the eight inch. Okay, now the biggest question is, okay, I have two types of duct here. I have flex duct, round metal duct. Now this is a really small chart. This one is meant to be a field estimators type chart. Okay, always look at what the duct is made out of, okay? When you're looking at these, try try to keep that in mind, okay? In this case, this column would work because they have it sized to a 0.05, but do I want to take these numbers absolutely if I'm going for metal duct and you're sizing for flexible, okay? Because again, you're doing a conversion here. So the reality is I'd really like to use a round metal um, conversion table, but this conversion table is not right for us because it has a 0.05. So these numbers are not going to be right. This is going to be closer, but again, if I were doing this in a design, yeah, I'd be using, I'd be um, not using this chart at all for this purpose. So again, down here on the eight, okay, eight inch round, what can I use for a square duct? So let's take a look at my duct sizing chart. Okay, eight inch round. I can use any one of these sizes, okay, for a square duct. Let's just pick one. Okay, let's pick, let's say we're gonna use a 12 by eight. Okay, so let's use a 12 by eight. Okay, let's um, say, okay, we're gonna just gonna settle 12 by eight. I can fix it in there. Okay, that's 400 CFM. Now, one of the things that I told you in my lecture is we want to try to keep things as square as possible. Okay, you don't want to go rectangular. Well, you want to keep things as proportional as possible. So going along with that proportional as possible, okay, I'm going to use an eight by eight because that is as proportional as possible. So let's go back to the lab. I'm going to do an eight by eight, okay? And I know there's some people out in the field that are going to say, ah, eh, that's not anything important because you might not always be able to fit an eight by eight. Sure, you might not. That's where you have to make adjustments in the field. Oh, so I have an eight inch round. Okay, now I need to find the air quantity in CFM. So come over here to your airflow. Let me get rid of a couple other lines I have here that are just messing things up. Okay, I'm gonna lose a few lines here. Ah, I'll leave one orange just for or one of the oranges, just because it makes a difference. Okay, and I'm gonna get rid of that one. Okay, Let's move that one over to the side. So we still have our 0.05, we're not deviating from that. That's a standard. Okay, I'm gonna drag my blue line down to the eight inch, okay? Now, so I have my eight inch round duct because we know that's what we have. It's eight inch round. Okay, now I need to find out where that those two lines cross. Okay, and if I get that orange line straight, it will be a miracle. There we go. Okay, so I am someplace very close to 200 CFM. I'm up over the 150. I'm probably like 170 CFM. Now, the next thing we have to do is find out where my static pre or where my velocity is. That's my feet per minute. That's this scale right here. 
So let's get our velocity in here, okay? I'm going to change colors on this line. Okay, so uh, let's go with green. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to draw a line in parallel, like with that 500, right through the center of that thing and keep it as straight and parallel as possible. Okay, so our velocity is about 470. So again, we have our 8-inch round. We have we want to get as close as we can to that 0.05-inch pressure drop. Okay, and then I have that velocity of 470. Now, do I have more that I could do with this? Okay, could I come up to a higher CFM? Yes, I could. Okay, but I'm going to go over that. I'm going to go over this static pressure drop that we have. Could I come down to a lower CFM through there? Yeah. Okay, but it's going to lower my it's going to lower my pr pressure drop, which is a good thing. So if I used an eight inch round duct and only set um, wanted to only put like a hundred twenty CFM through it, okay, I'd have a feet per minute for three hundred. But in this case, because I'm maxing out the pressure drop at our pressure drops we said, which is 0.05, I'm using four seventy. So again. I can always put less CFMs through a piece of ductwork, but I'll have other additional problems that go along with that in terms of throw into the space. So in the 8-inch round, okay, where we're at with this lab, okay, let's come back over here. Okay, I have, I'm going to say 170 CFM, and I'm going to say 470 is my velocity. Hundred seventy CFM and four seventy FPM. Okay, now if I came down, if I wanted to calculate for a five inch piece of duct work, that actually becomes more interesting. Okay, so duct sizing chart. Okay, let me get rid of some of the extra stuff in here. Don't want to confuse the issue. Duct sizing chart doesn't have a 5-inch here, okay? So you have to a little bit look. You're going to have to calculate a 5-inch round. We know from just knowing this, we could use a 5x5, five five, okay? If you think about it, we could just use a 5x5 five because five it's proportional, okay? So we have that. That's easy. You can do that from memory, okay? Now, if I have to figure out 5-inch CFM, let's go back over here. I'm going to drop this line to 5-inch. Now, we are right on. If you look where we're at on that crosshair, that is right on that 50. Okay, and feet per minute... comes way down. So let's say 50 CFM, it's barely usable. Honestly, this is one of these. I probably wouldn't even use that size. Okay, but because the exercise is asking us, it's 50 CFM and about 350 feet per minute. So we can put that in there. Okay, so 50 CFM. And I said 350. Again, this is so bore five inch, I probably wouldn't even use. Okay, so now let's try the 12 inch. Okay, I'm not going to do this whole lab for everybody because that's not the point of this video. But I do want to straighten up if I left confusion last night with somebody. So we go to 12 inch duct work. We take that green line, which is my feet per minute through where the crosshairs. And we also come down to um, where my CFM is, which is the orange line. So I have 600 feet per minute, 500 CFM. So I can come in here, do my 612 inch. Well, let's make it easy. 12 by 12 works. Okay. So I said 500 CFM. 600 feet per minute. Now, here's where you start having to be really careful. As soon as I get over 600 feet per minute, 
I'm starting to hit my maximum velocities that I can have for branch ducts, okay, in residential. So as soon as we hit like 12 inch, we're more talking about main ducts. Now, anything higher than that in residential, I'd have to split that off into two individual branch ducts, each with a lower CFM in order to lower that feet per minute, okay? Because I'm going to start getting noisy duct work if I go much higher over that. And people are going to start feeling real breezes. Okay, so if I go to like 18 inch round, okay, again, I could do 18 by 18. Does this have, okay, no. I could do that eight, 18 by 18 without a problem, okay, or any size with the same inside surface area, okay, but let's keep it easy. I want to be as proportional as possible. Okay, now, if I take my, take my 18 inch round, and let's find out what the airflow is. Okay. Find out where my lines cross. That's my important part. Make sure that's a little bit straighter there. Move that one. Okay, so I'm now over. I'm about 1,500 CFM. But look at my velocity. 800 feet per minute. Okay. 1500 CFM, so I'm moving a lot of air. I'm moving probably, well, I'm moving over two tons of air conditioning on CFM. But my velocity has now increased to 800 feet per minute if I'm pumping the maximum CFM. Now, coming back over here, could I pump less CFM through? Oh, yeah, I could come down. I could move this down to only putting 1,000 CFM. I drop my velocity. If I move um, 800 CFM, my velocity comes down even further. But if I'm getting the max airflow through the ductwork, which is what we want to do in most cases, okay, we want to size our ductwork accordingly. Remember, the more ductwork, the bigger the ductwork, the more expensive it is. So we want to go where these lines cross. Okay, now, but because I'm up so high, Okay, my airflow is now 800 CFM, so I am now the max of the return airflow. Okay, so I hope that helps clear up a little bit of what we're doing. Try not to use the field sizing duct work, duct um, stuff. You really, this is a, this, these are put out by publication just so you can easily calculate this if you're in the field. But if you're doing design work back at a desk or over a blueprint, to take the time and go back to the airflow duct sizing. Now, that is part of the ACA manual um, D. And you can, I, you can find ACA manual D out, on, um, out in, on the web, and you can buy it from ACA. And it gives you all these neat charts and everything inside of it. It gives you a lot of pressure drops, gives you a lot of very good information in the manual D. So it's definitely, if you're doing a lot of design, grab the Manual D. This is an older version, but the newer version is 2016. So hope that helps somebody.